Go out to Europe, China shouldn't be too idealistic. Go out to sea, to Europe. The Chinese automotive market is facing internal competition and challenges, prompting more and more car companies to shift their focus overseas. As a result, at the highly anticipated Munich Motor Show, several Chinese car brands made a high profile appearance, turning the tables and attracting attention, sparking discussions about their international expansion. In fact, at the car show, Chinese new energy vehicles shone brightly, highlighting the slow transition of European new energy vehicles, which was an embarrassing situation. The frustration displayed by certain EU authorities after being confronted with this reality was not entirely unexpected. The global market is now flooded with cheap Chinese electric vehicles, and due to massive subsidies from the government, their prices are artificially lowered. Distorting the Chinese market, said Ursula von der Leyen, president of the European Commission, during her annual State of the Union address in Strasbourg, France, three days after the Munich Motor Show. She announced an anti subsidy investigation into Chinese electric vehicles and claimed that it was necessary to protect Europe from the influence of Chinese electric vehicle manufacturers benefiting from state subsidies. To find fault, one does not need to look far. According to EU law, if it is determined that there is a violation of trade agreements and dumping practices, punitive tariffs will be imposed on Chinese new energy vehicle exports, and related companies will face an additional 10% tariff. In other words, EU authorities are attempting to exclude Chinese car companies through trade protectionism, however, can the tide of the times really be reversed? Unity is the key to all possible forces. Classifying the success of Chinese new energy vehicles solely as a result of government subsidies is a case of turning a blind eye to the truth. Moreover, in reality, just as China has embraced German luxury brands, BBA, not all overseas markets are rejecting Chinese new energy vehicles. Competition should motivate China, not scare it, said German Chancellor Scholz during the Munich Motor Show. Over the past few decades, the German automotive industry has faced competition from Japan and South Korea. Today, electric vehicles from China will provide innovation-driven power to German car companies. In contrast to the obstruction from French brands, the situation with German brands is refreshing. It is also evident that it is not only German brands but also Magna, the world's fourth-largest automotive parts supplier extending an olive branch to Chinese car companies for their overseas expansion. Not long ago, Uwe Geisinger, the president of Magna Europe, stated that they are currently in talks with Chinese car manufacturers regarding production in Europe. The Magna Stair manufacturing plant in Graz, Austria, has an used capacity and can provide contract manufacturing services to Chinese car companies. It is clear that, in Magna's eyes, Assisting Chinese car companies in going overseas is a good business opportunity. In response to this, Wu Jin, the president of Magna China, said, in the context of the globalization trend, it is something that Magna is very proud of and looking forward to, to help Chinese car companies achieve their high-quality vehicles reaching every corner of the world. Indeed, Magna is ready to embrace the new phase of Chinese new energy vehicle development and follow the trend. Geisinger stated that in the future, China can provide resources to Chinese car manufacturers in terms of product development, small-scale CKD-SKD models, or utilizing the existing capacity in Graz. In short, they aim to ensure a win-win cooperation model for Chinese car manufacturers through various means, including joint ventures. Magna's example illustrates that Chinese car companies going overseas have not only competitors but also many helpers. So, in a broader sense, if a car company is eager to go overseas but is concerned about the EU's anti-subsidy investigation or is uncertain about the European market, it may consider using Magna as a crutch to explore and test the waters. Alternatively, if there is still some unease, apart from Magna, Chinese car companies can rely on other sources for their overseas expansion, such as Chinese component enterprises. Previously, China's vehicle export volume was not significant, 
and the export of automotive products mainly consisted of components. As a result, a large number of Chinese component suppliers, such as Yenfeng and Joyson Electronics, took the lead and established a presence in overseas markets ahead of complete vehicle manufacturers. For car companies that are unfamiliar with foreign markets, these component suppliers, who have taken an early step abroad, are not only an important part of their future supply chain system but also essential compasses. In fact, it is perhaps by taking this step forward that battery manufacturers like CATL and Guoxian High Tech have shown an unusually aggressive side on their path to going overseas. Of course, for car companies that want to be extra cautious, they can follow national policies and explore overseas markets step by step along the Belt and Road Initiative. If pure electric vehicles are difficult to sell, then hybrid vehicles, extended range vehicles, and conventional fuel vehicles can be introduced successively, ultimately opening up the market and further establishing the brand's overseas value. IT must be acknowledged that despite the many forces that can be united in the overseas market, in the face of the unprecedented transformation in the automotive industry, Chinese car companies, if they only have idealistic intentions to go overseas, are likely to fall into the web of realism. The so-called overseas expansion can be roughly divided into three stages. The first stage involves a small number of complete vehicle products going abroad to build reputation. The second stage focuses on establishing a foothold in overseas markets and selling in larger quantities. And the third stage involves establishing local factories and supply chain systems to sell technology and brand. As for why many car companies focus on the European and American markets when going overseas, the reason is that most car companies are still in the first stage of overseas expansion. For these proactive car companies, what they need is not necessarily to sell a large number of cars in overseas markets but to cleverly establish a tall brand image under the guise of going overseas. This is especially important for new energy vehicle brands with a relatively short history, as it further proves their brand value. However, it is undeniable that Chinese new energy vehicle brands must go through the process of overseas expansion in order to become global brands. Whether it is building reputation or selling in larger quantities, as long as they can establish a prominent presence, it means they have secured a ticket to future markets. The established forces will certainly not allow emerging forces to easily take over, especially considering the intertwined interests and geopolitical factors. In the first half of this year, China's automobile exports surpassed Japan, making China the world's largest automobile exporter. However, it is worth noting that the Russian market saw a significant growth of 622% with exports exceeding 370,000 vehicles, making Russia the largest destination for Chinese automobile exports. The reasons behind this development need not be elaborated. On the other hand, faced with the rapid rise of Chinese new energy vehicles, both the United States and the European Union have erected barriers. The U.S. lowering inflation and boosting American Jobs Act requires the new energy vehicle industry chain and complete vehicle manufacturers to establish factories with substantial assets in the United States or ally countries in order to receive subsidies. The EU's carbon border tax policy, as well as the upcoming anti-subsidy investigations, have significantly raised the barriers for Chinese new energy vehicle exports to Europe, clearly. Although Chinese automobiles have gained a reputation as the world's top exporter, the proportion of new energy vehicles in these exports is still relatively low, accounting for only about 40%. In order for Chinese automobiles to truly rise, it is necessary to promote the brand of new energy vehicles and highlight the unique characteristics of Chinese automobiles. The good news is that the pursuit of a better, more convenient, and comfortable driving experience is universal worldwide. Whether it is China's popular intelligent features or the advanced concept of software-defined cars, they will serve as powerful tools for major car manufacturers in their overseas expansion efforts. However, it must be acknowledged that although the future of Chinese automobiles is promising, the path forward remains challenging. The current price wars in the Chinese market 
various restrictions in overseas markets, incomplete supply chain systems, and the development issues faced by car manufacturers themselves all indicate that in order for Chinese automobiles to reach their peak, a steady and cautious approach is necessary. Each step must be taken carefully and steadily, however, there is no need to be discouraged. Please believe that one day, when we look back, the difficulties and obstacles we face now will only serve as nourishment for the growth of Chinese automobiles. Those who cannot defeat China will eventually make it stronger. Stronger.